the Indianapolis Colts, who, you know, again, led by Eagles offensive coordinator from a couple years ago, Shane Steichen, OC Jim Bob Cooter, great name. DC is Gus Bradley again. Last year, they went 9-8, and eight, almost snuck in the playoffs. They had a tight game late against the, um, Col- against the Texans that they lost in heartbreaking fashion. Their season last year, I wouldn't call I wouldn't call it bad. I wouldn't call it good because the main attraction, Anthony Richardson, number four pick in the draft, number five. Yeah. He four. got hurt after week three, collarbone. You know, we didn't really question his durability because I mean guys, six five, two fifty. But hey, you got you can't take big hits. He takes way you too cannot, many hits. He takes way too many. That's something they've been really preaching into his head this offseason. I hope it sticks because I want to see this guy on the field not on the sideline holding a clipboard because he is one of the most dynamic athletes in the NFL. And I mean, it, it really starts here. Uh, you can go to the key additions and key losses first one, but we all know this team, this conversation around this team is about Anthony Rich and AR 15. Yeah. Uh, they got one of the best edge rushers, if not the best from a consensus standpoint, uh, Latu out of UCLA, uh, they got A.D. Mitchell from Texas, who me and Max are, you know, we're we're fans of. I want to say big fans, but we like him. Uh, some of the key losses, uh, Gardner Minshew now in Las Vegas and Isaiah McKenzie. So not much. I know Michael Pittman got a contract extension with them, but you, you hit it right on the nose, Max. Uh, it's Anthony Richardson. He takes way too many hits. But what I seen last year from him. He single-handedly got him in games. Single-handedly. Like, pure he was fucking so, leg and arm. I He was so far ahead passing-wise than I thought he'd be. Yeah. I was like, wow. It was so, ugly, though, at times. It was There were ugly. times, absolutely. But the talent is undeniable. And, I mean, real quick one, just to touch the offense. Anthony Richardson, Jonathan Taylor, Alec Pierce, really big, di- speedy receiver. Michael Pittman, underrated. Josh Downs, who had a lot of big moments last year. O-line. Like, let's have a vintage O-line. They have their boy Raymond, who actually thought um, played good left tackle for them. Quentin Nelson, always good. Ryan Kelly, always good. Hey, healthy Braden Smith, that's a dominant O-line. That, that's a recipe you can win a division with. Mm-hmm. Think about what Shane Steichen had in Philly. Mobile quarterback, big play receivers, dominant O-line. The one thing Shane Steichen didn't have was Jonathan Taylor, arguably best running back in football. Yeah. Well, look, he had ba- he's going to have basically an extra off season because he sat on the bench all of last year, so he's going to have to get the mental part of the game. Like, I think one thing that I would love to see from Shane Steichen do with Anthony Richardson is get him in rhythm a lot quicker than he did because it would be at the end of games. I felt like where he would start getting a rhythm and maybe not so get him involved in the game running wise. So fucking like much okay. early. How often do you see, how often do you think we'll see him used as a runner? I think he's going to be used a lot. That's what Shane Steichen does. He has one of the best like quarterback <sighs> systems when it comes to, running. I, I think, I think it'll progressively get more. They're not going to, I don't think they're going to just throw him out there and say, Hey, run, run, run. Right. I don't know. I just I don't want to see that from him. You know, I want to see it like I'm obviously they'll do read options and stuff like that. Like, hey, you know, just it's going to depend on where he is. It's going to depend on where he is, because if he's at a point, I just want to see him healthy. If he's at a point of last year, like if if he only got like five percent better as a passer, they're going to have to run him a lot. We're going to have to see because if he's not that good of a passer, we don't know. We don't know where he is technically passing. We don't really know. Yeah. We saw three games, four games. That's not enough to know. Yeah. And he got knocked out of one of his games on a touchdown run where he just got hit for no freaking reason. Yeah. he. That's one thing for sure. Like I said, he needs to learn how to fucking slide, bro. 100%. Uh, look, when it comes down to the defense, what are some realistic, you know, stuff that you expect to see out of Latu? Oh, I expect to see a very good season from him. I'm not saying, you know, 15 sacks, seven and a half, 10, maybe 12, but getting a ton of pressures. Hey, 
Quiddy Pay was a miss. Uh, we're we're ready to call that one a miss. Yeah. He's been good to okay. Never touched on great. Dave desperately needed somebody coming off the edge in Indy for like since maybe Robert Mathis. Yeah. Do you can you think of one good pass rusher? They've really DeForest Buckner's a stud from the inside. I love I like a lot of guys on their defense. Zaire Franklin, underrated tackling machine. Kenny Moore, I always ride with him. Blackman is they still have um, Blackman. He's he's freaking good if he's still there. I yeah. always get there's so many Blackmans and loves and shit. I always get confused. But Latu can really be a difference maker for this defense that needs to just find ways to create pressure without having to send people. And I mean, look, this is a long ways away from Darius Leonard, the maniac days, who had a very short prime. But this defense can be good. I don't expect great. I expect maybe 15 to 10 one, somewhere in that range, maybe 20 to 10. They could be somewhere in there. It won't be bottom of it. They have too much talent, but they don't have enough talent to be elite. Would you agree with that? It's hard. I I think it's hard. It's hard to be elite with that type of defense that they play with Gus Bradley. Gus Bradley loves to play that zone. He doesn't really send all that many blitzes. Uh, He's going to try to hit home with four most of the time. And Latu's going to. They they don't. They don't have enough. Yeah. They don't have enough to just go. I can see him struggling. I can see him struggling. I what I want to see a real realistic expectation be fucking really good against the run because on on film he was great against the run like he would make plays in the backfield i want oh, that yeah. from him you know off bat like i want to see that right away a lot of the great players one that i can remember vividly of watching up really closely Khalil Mack Khalil Mack didn't get a lot he had four sacks his rookie year but what did he do he was one of the best run defenders right when he stepped foot into the league it's not all about sacks I'm going to preach this all the time. It's not all about that sack number. Be disruptive. Make plays in the run game. Be effective like that. It's not all about the sacks. Um, as far as the over-under goes, where are they at? Eight and a half. Jeez, man. <laughs> Fuck Vegas, bro. Oh, my goodness. I'm going to go because uh, they're probably going to get eight. I can see him getting eight. I'm going to go under. Under, bro. I can't go over. over. I'm going to go go over. over, Really? Yeah. Oh, man. That's tough. Yeah. I I can't do that. Can't do that. Big train. Everything and what it seems. Glittering gold bone clean. Sheen. Not on my team. This organic. We don't buy streams.